first at nine. Headlines. Hello there. Very good evening to you and welcome to your news at nine. Come to you live from the news press centre here in Colombo, and I'm Joel Outskun with tonight's headlines. Hirunika tops preferential voting in the Colombo district. Prasanna Ranadunga first in the Gampa district. UPFA dispels views of opposition analysts, says the government has won a resounding victory. A common opposition candidate should be fielded for the next presidential poll. A statement from Sarath Fonseca. Mark's ballot paper discovered at a polling station in Gaul. Let's now cross over to our news for studios for a comprehensive news bulletin. Thank you, Joel. A very good evening. I'm Shane Silver. I'm Stephen Lazarus. Now, Shane, I will have a comprehensive uh, report on the concluded Western and Southern Provincial Council elections. But first up, a look at your stop story. Convening a media briefing this morning, the UPFA commented on their elections victory. The United National Party has not seen a large increase in the number of votes or a major victory. But the minor parties, that is the Janata Mukti Peramuna and Sarat Fonseca's party, have won more seats than they had. During elections that do not change the government of the country, it is normal for minor parties to make such gains. In an election that changes governments like the parliamentary election or a presidential election, the people cast their vote for the main parties. We completely reject the analysis that was made by opposition parties at media briefings convened after the results were announced. We must note that it is very clear that the Alliance government, the government of His Excellency the President, has won a major victory. In truth, what happened in the Hambantota district is that the JVP, which had 11% of the vote, has increased their percentage of the vote to 12%. We must accept that there has been a revival among the JVP supporters. This shows that Anru Kumara Disanayaka's leadership has been more of a revival for the JVP supporters than Somo Ansa Amrasinghe's leadership. The ministers offered this response to a question posed by a journalist on the United National Party. In our analysis, we say that the Leadership Council has not succeeded in responding to the political decline of the United National Party. They have lost in all the electorates of their Leadership Council members. Sajid Premadasa has cast a green light. Speaking to News First, Hirunika Premachandra, who polled the highest number of preferential votes in the Colombo district, expressed these views. This victory was more a victory for truth and justice than a personal victory for me. The people got to know me after my father's demise. I did not commence my engagement with politics by distributing things to people. Every preferential vote I received was because of the love they had for my father. We are all aware of the vice and corruption that is rampant in the Kolonav electorate. I have a responsibility to rebuild the Kolonav electorate. I will ensure that I do everything legitimately possible for the people of the Colombo district within the provincial council. That is my responsibility. Things are built. It will all be pointless if our attitudes do not change. It is my hope as one of their leaders to change the attitudes of the youth and bring forth a group that loves their country, society, religion and community and people who are willing to do something for their country. On to another story that made the headlines tonight. Now, leader of the Democratic Party, Sarath Fonseca, says that the opposition must field a common candidate during the next presidential elections. A majority of members in the party are newcomers. The party was formed almost a year ago and tomorrow we will celebrate its first anniversary. We battled against political parties and powerful politicians, both with years of political experience. Despite the party being new, the people have placed their trust in us. The people have understood that we are a powerful political force. I was bound and imprisoned and my civic rights were stripped. We fought against this. Eventually, I received my civic rights. I legally exercised my franchise during this election. We see this as a positive sign. During the past presidential election, we were of the view that the opposition must field a common candidate. We strongly believe that the opposition must put forward a common candidate to contest the next presidential election. Sarat Fonseca also expressed the following views. 
I think that 99% of the media personnel here want to help us in a personal capacity. However, due to the present attitudes of media institutions and concerns regarding loyalty individually, media personnel could not do any justice to us. However, for an example, it was only Sirisa that provided us with a proper media coverage during this election. During the recently concluded polls, we saw the manner in which the elections commissioner functioned. He was like a scarecrow. He did not use the powers vested in him. Despite making numerous complaints, we did not receive any justice. Deputy leader of the Democratic Party, Jayanth Kheragoda, also addressed this media briefing. There needs to be democracy in every party of this country. The people need to feel that they are living in a democratic country. No one can say that democracy prevails just because of an election. The rulers are saying that an election was held. However, when you look at the voter turnout, not even 50% have cast their ballot. 50% of the votes cast have been split among parties. The rulers who utilized state resources and state property and engaged in this corrupt election failed to secure a formidable victory. The Western and Southern Provincial Council polls concluded with the UPFA claiming victory in both provinces, albeit with a reduction in the number of seats won and the percentage of the votes polled in comparison with the last poll in 2009. The Democratic Party emerged as a third force with the JVP to undergoing a revival. But what about the individual candidates themselves? Stephanie Lazarus has more on the results of the preferential voting. A notable feature of the Provincial Council polls was the election of several rookies ahead of former councillors. Nevertheless, the former chief ministers of both the western and southern provinces polled the highest number of preferential votes this time around as well. Let's first take a look at the candidates who polled the highest number of preferential votes in the three districts of the western province. UPFA candidate Hirunika Premachandra secured the highest number of preferential votes in the Colombo district, polling 139,034 votes. Udaya Gamampila was second with 115,638 votes. Upali Kodikare was third among the UPFA candidates with 47,822 votes. SM Marika topped the list of UNP candidates in the Colombo district with 67,243 preferential votes. Manjushri Arangala was second with 45,654 preferential votes, while Mujibur Rahman was third with 42,126 preferential votes. Susil Kindalpitya topped the list of Democratic Party candidates in the Colombo district, polling 32,918 preferential votes. DP Colombo district candidates Nimal R. Piris and Nalin Pradeep were also elected to the council with 14,822 and 13,653 preferential votes respectively. JVP Colombo district candidate KD Lal secured 45,460 preferential votes, topping the list of JVP candidates. Lakshman Nipunarachi and Sunil Watagala were second and third with 9,528 and 8,980 preferential votes respectively. Former Chief Minister Prasanna Ranatunga topped the list of UPFA candidates from the Gampa district with 249,678 preferential votes. Nimal Lanza was second with 106,661 preferential votes. Sahan Pradeep was third among the UPFA candidates in the Gampa district, securing 59,892 preferential votes. Attorney at law Susari Dinal, who also contested on the UPFA ticket for the Gampa district, was elected to the Western Provincial Council with 37,598 preferential votes. Preferential votes. Harshana Rajakarna topped the list of UNP candidates in the Gampa district with 51,018 votes. Kavinda Heshan was second among the UNP candidates with 41,654 preferential votes. UNP candidate Edward Gunasekar was third with 29,994 preferential votes. Democratic Party candidate Rajitha Ranga Hapuarachi topped the party list in the Gampa district with 14,644 preferential votes. Anurudh Lekamge was second with 14,058 preferential votes. Ashoka Dayaratna was third among the DP candidates in Gampa with 9,985 preferential votes. Mahinda Jaisinghe topped the list of JVP candidates in the Gampa district with 14,933 preferential votes. Ashoka Ranwala was second with 7,438 preferential votes. Senal Wagama topped the list of UPFA candidates from the Kaluthara district with 115,385 preferential votes. Rohan Abe Gunawadhan was second with 51,339 preferential votes. Yasapal Koraligay was third among the UPFA candidates with 42,395 preferential votes. 
Jagat Vidhan atop the list of UNP candidates in the Kalutara district with 29,920 preferential votes. El Jamil was second with 24,576, while PD Abe Ratna was third among the UNP candidates with 20,797 preferential votes. Ravindra Yasas led the pack of Democratic Party candidates for the Kalutari district with 12,885 preferential votes. DP candidate Aruna Deepal was second with 12,469 preferential votes. Nalinda Jaitis claims the seat won by the JVP from the Kalutari district having polled 11,949 preferential votes. These are the candidates who polled the highest number of preferential votes in the southern province. Former Southern Province Chief Minister Sean Vijaylal De Silva topped the list of UPFA candidates in the Gaul District with 95,860 preferential votes. UGD Arya Tileka was second with 48,289, while Sampat Atukorala was third with 42,531 preferential votes. Bandulalal Bandari Goda was first among the UNP candidates with 30,001 preferential votes, while Vijay Pale Hetia Rachi and Ashoka Danawansa were second and third with 23,478 and 21,854 preferential votes respectively. DP candidates Amarasiri Kuruage and Padmasiri De Silva were elected from the Gaul district with 8,336 and 6,062 preferential votes respectively. JVP candidate Nalin Hewage was elected from the Gaul district to the Southern Provincial Council with 10,009 preferential votes. Pasandaya Pabe Wadhana topped the list of UPFA candidates in the Matra district with 76,870 preferential votes. Chandimar Rasaputra was second with 70,609 preferential votes, while Sarathya Pabe Wadhana was third with 47,090 preferential votes. Chatura Galapati was first among the UNP candidates from the Matra district with 27,930 preferential votes. Gayant Sanjeeva was second with 22,271 preferential votes, while Kapila Wellapili was third with 20,708 preferential votes. Jiradasa Kitulgoda topped the list of the JVP candidates from the Mathare district with 6,173 preferential votes. Jayanta Patirana was second with 5,084 preferential votes. DP candidate Ranjit Munasinghe was elected to the Southern Provincial Council from the Mathare district with 6,690 preferential votes. DV Upul topped the list of UPFA candidates from the Hambantota district with 64,995 preferential votes. MK Kasun was second in the district with 55,881 preferential votes, while Ajit Rajapaksa was third with 34,591 preferential votes. A. Tenako Nilame took the four from among the UNP candidates in the Hambantota district with 28,825 preferential votes. Nimal Lal Chandra was second from the UNP with 17,199, while Nihal Veda Arachi was third with 13,593 preferential votes. Nihal Galapati topped the JVP list of candidates in the Hambantota district with 11,957 preferential votes. Atula Vedagoda was second with 6,177 preferential votes. Candidates who claimed victory at the polls left the counting centers in Colombo, Gampa and Kalutara to raucous celebrations. Hirunika Premachandra, who topped the UPFA list of candidates and secured the highest number of preferential votes in the Colombo district, received a warm reception from her supporters. Although there is a decline in the number of votes polled by the UPFA, we have not seen a major decline in Colombo and we have claimed a major victory. At this election, I was able to lay the foundation for an exemplary and environment-friendly new political culture through my campaign. Susil Kindelpitya, who contested on the DP ticket, succeeded in securing the highest number of preferential votes from the party. 
We have won three seats in the Colombo district and I see this as a major victory in the Western Provincial Council. We concluded our campaign successfully amid the many obstacles and schemes. We saw major shortcomings during this election, but we will strengthen our journey to democracy in the future. Former Western Province Chief Minister Prasanna Ranatung, who secured the highest number of preferential votes in the Gampa district, received a warm reception from his supporters. I have always maintained that I have faith in the people of the Gampa district. Today the people have confirmed my faith. UMP Gampa District candidate Harshan Rajkarna also received a warm reception. <laughs> Senel Valgama, who received the highest number of preferential votes in the Kalutur district, also received a warm welcome from his supporters. A topic that was at the forefront of the Western and Southern Provincial Council election since nominations were called for was actors and actresses being nominated for the Provincial Councils. How did the actresses who secured nominations fare at the ballot box? Anar Kaliakarsha, who contested the Southern Provincial Council from the Mathur district on the UPF ticket, failed to secure her seat in the council this time around. Nadisha Hemamali, making her first foray into politics, also contested from the Mathur district but on the UNP ticket and failed to obtain enough preferential votes to secure a seat in the council. Geeta Kumar Singer, who contested the Southern Provincial Council poll from the Gold District on the UPFA ticket, received 26,932 preferential votes, securing herself a seat in the Provincial Council. Let's now take a look at how the actors performed at the ballot box. Madhu Madhu Arvinda, who contested the Western Provincial Council poll from the Gampa District on the UPFA ticket, received 24,727 preferential votes but failed to secure a seat in the council. Ravindra Yasas, who contested from the Kalutara district on the DP ticket, topped the party's list of candidates with 12,885 preferential votes and secured a seat in the council. Nalin Pradeep Uduela, who contested on the DP ticket from the Colombo district, also secured a seat in the provincial council. However, Jagat Benragama, who contested the Colombo district from the same party, did not secure a seat in the council. Roger Senevratna, who contested the Western Provincial Council from the Colombo district on the UPFA ticket, also secured a seat in the council. UNP candidate Rodney Fraser also secured a seat in the council from the Colombo district. The son of artist Bennett Ratnayaka, Udara Ratnayaka, was also victorious at the Western Provincial Council poll, contesting from the Colombo district on the UNP ticket. Several sons, daughters and relatives of prominent politicos also contested the Provincial Council polls. Let's take a look at how they fared in the election. Pasan Yapa Abe Wardena, the son of Minister Lakshman Yapa Abe Wardena, secured the highest number of preferential votes from the Matre district to be elected to the Southern Provincial Council. The son of late Amrasiri Dodam Goda, Isru Dodam Goda, was elected to the Southern Provincial Council from the Gaul district. Senior Minister P.S. Nagamage's son, Randi Magamage, was also elected to the Southern Provincial Council. Senal Valgama, the son of Transport Minister Kumar Valgama, contested the Western Provincial Council poll from the Kalutari district and secured the highest number of preferential votes. The daughter of Minister Jeevan Kumaranathunga, Malsha Kumaranathunga, contesting from the Colombo district, also won a seat in the Western Provincial Council. Rohan Abe Gunawardana, the brother of Project Minister Rohit Abe Gunawardana, was also elected to the Western Provincial Council from the Kalutari district on the UPFA ticket. The son-in-law of Minister Gamini Lokuge, Tushara Pereira, won a seat in the council from the Colombo district on the UPFA ticket. The son of late UNP parliamentarian Dr. Jailat Jayawardana, Kavinda Heshan Jayawardana, was also elected to the Western Provincial Council from the Gampa district on the UNP ticket. An unfortunate incident that occurred several days prior to the election was the death of JVP candidate Sumati Pala Manavadu in a road accident. However, his supporters did not forget him at the ballot box. Sumati Palamanawadu was contesting the Western Provincial Council from the Gampa district on the JVP ticket. 2,391 preferential votes had been cast for Manawadu, who passed away in an accident days prior to the election. 
A marked ballot paper was discovered at the polling station at Richard Patirana College in Uluwitike, Gaul, this morning. The police say that the ballot paper had been marked for Ratna Gamage, who contested under the number 12 on the JVP ticket. The principal of Richard Patirana College in Uluwitake, Gaul, Venerable Thalava Dharmarama Thera, lodged a complaint regarding the discovery at the Poddala Police this morning. <laughs> At about 10.30 this morning, one of the masters gave me what appeared to be a ballot paper that had been picked up by the students. The candidate, Ratna Gamage, and the Assistant Elections Commissioner in Gaul also arrived at the polling station. It is clear to us that this is a marked ballot paper, but we will consider this as a ballot paper that has not been counted. The police say that investigations into the discovery are underway. Minister Patali Champika expressed his displeasure over the election commissioner's decision to prohibit the use of text messages for election propaganda activities. The minister made this remark addressing a seminar on social media in Colombo today. <laughs> The ideal way for us to engage in election campaigning in an environmentally friendly manner without pasting posters, without placing cutouts and distributing alcohol is to use mobile communication networks. Therefore, I think that imposing restrictions on this mode of communication is not favorable. Now, he will be compelled to read every text message sent from every network. This is a breach of privacy and in violation of the Constitution and the law of the country. I told him that I will send an SMS and that he can take any decision he wants. The election law was formulated in 1988 and that is how the provincial council system was born. Since then, to date, technology has advanced in many ways. There is no reference to the use of new technology in the Constitution. <laughs> The leader of the Jana Sata Peramuna, Venerable Bhattaramulya Sila Ratanathero, commented on the Provincial Council polls at a media briefing that was convened today. Jana Sata Peramuna Venuyang, Chandaya Dunnu, Nodunnu, Sielu Madinata, I wish to thank all those who voted for the Janaseta Perumuna and all those who didn't. If the party received a single seat, we would have rendered a great service. You have voted for political parties and elected their candidates. However, there is an issue as to whether you can get a job or at least get something for your area through them. We cannot accept this election result. We wish to state that this election was conducted in a manner where it cannot be accepted. The UPFA and the UNP are also losing their voter bases. Several individuals who were involved in the attack in Mathara on a procession of UNP supporters who had arrived from Devinura demanding that the leadership of the party that has failed to bring victory to the party were defeated at the provincial council polls this time around. On the 5th of October last year, the procession of UNP supporters faced a planned attack near the Mathara Urban Council. The attackers used cinnamon poles as clubs. A number of UNP supporters were injured in the attack. News first broadcast images of the attackers in this fashion to assist the police in identifying the perpetrators. Nevertheless, these attackers were granted nominations by the UNP for the Western and Southern Provincial Council polls. In spite of them being granted nominations, the UNP supporters ensured their defeat at the ballot box.
Actress Nadisha Hemamali, who happily declared upon receiving her nomination that she too had joined the Cinnamon Pole Army, was handed defeat by the UNP supporters at the ballot box. Meanwhile, the number of votes the UNP has received have also declined in the Mathura districts since the appointment of Leadership Council member Mangala Samaravira to the position of organizer of Mathura. At the 2009 Provincial Council poll, the UNP polled 17,996 votes in the Mathura electorate or 34.64% of the vote. This time around, the UNP polled 16,305 votes or 30.2% of the vote. While the UNP won five seats in the Mathura district in 2009 following the appointment of MP Mangala Samravira as the leader of the Mathura district, the UNP only secured four seats in the Mathura district at this year's election. The case pertaining to the murder of British national Kuram Sheikh and the rape of Victoria Alexo Alexandrovna was taken up at the Kalamu High Court before Justice Rohini Walgama today. The manager of the hotel where the incident took place testified in court today. She said that an individual identified as Ryan Akalanka who arrived at a Christmas party at the hotel on the day of the incident was assaulted by the defendants including the chairman of the Tangal Pradesh. Shia Sabha. She noted that she went that she noted rather that when she attempted to call the police, the fifth defendant threatened her at gunpoint. The manager said that Kuram Sheikh attempted to save Ryan Akalanka when he was being assaulted and the defendants turned on Sheikh and Victoria. She further noted that the third defendant, the chairman of the Tangal Pradesh Shia Sabha, did not assault Victoria. The witness further said that the hotel property was damaged following the altercation. She added that Victoria had wanted to assist Kuram Sheikh but had been unable to do so due to the injuries she suffered after being a Today marks day five of Around the World in 40 Days, a 40-day world tour organized ahead of the World Youth Conference that will be held in Sri Lanka this year. These delegates traveling across five continents will not only exchange their ideas between the youth in those countries, but also focus their attention on programs initiated by them. Around the world in 40 days. The Sri Lankan delegation arrived at the Monas Monument in Jakarta, Indonesia this morning. This tower, which is 132 meters in height, was opened in 1975. <laughs> What you can see behind me is the Monas Memorial. The Indonesians constructed it in remembrance of their independent struggle. About 50% of the population of Indonesia are below the age of 30. Young people hold high positions in most companies and organizations. The youth of Indonesia are planning various programs to drive the country's economy. <laughs> It's a very good opportunity for Sri Lankan youths and Indonesian youths uh, to celebrate this uh, World Conference 2015 in Sri Lanka. This is a very uh, important occasion for Sri Lanka youths and Indonesian youths to uh, make some bilateral relationship between it. Following a meeting at the Indian High Commission, the delegates are scheduled to arrive in Manila in the Philippines. Prominent squash player Deepika Rebecca Pallikal was amongst the recipients of the prestigious Padma Shri Award, one of India's highest civilian honours, at a ceremony held at the Shrastrapati Bhavan in New Delhi today. Indian President Pranab Mukherjee presented India's highest civilian honours, the Padma Vinushan, Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri Awards at an investiture ceremony held at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in Delhi. Squash player Deepika Rebecca Palikal was amongst the recipients of the Padma Shri in company with the famed actress Vidya Balan, the renowned poet Ashok Chandrakar, medical practitioner Dr. Pawan Raj Goyal, designer Wendell Augustine Rodericks, and several other prominent personalities. The PIBT graduation ceremony 2014 was held in Colombo yesterday. 
The event was graced by several dignitaries, including the Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, Rajita Senaratna. At this ceremony, a Lifetime Achievement Award was presented to former News First employee, Dr. Gayatri Gunaratna. The production of tea has decreased by 10% in the month of February compared to the same month last year. According to the statistics of the Sri Lanka Tea Board, the production of tea last month amounted to 22.4 million kilograms. In February 2013, 24.8 million kilograms of tea was produced. However, according to the statistics of the Sri Lanka Tea Board, only 22.4 million kilograms of tea were produced last month. High grown tea in February last year amounted to 6.1 million kilograms. This year it has fallen to 5.2 million kilograms which translates to a 16% drop in production. Mid-grown tea has also decreased by 9% last month which amounts to a production of 3.5 million kilograms. Meanwhile last year in February there was a production of 14.9 million kilograms of low-grown tea as opposed to 20 2.4 in February this year. Experts in the field state that the main reason for this reduction in producing tea is the prevalent dry weather. Now moving on to more local news, Harshana Rajakarana of the UNP who polled the highest number of preferential votes had this to say on his victory. As expected, we sent a message to all of Sri Lanka to hope for the establishment of a UNP government. News First U reporter Nadeshan Purusottam filed this report on an accident that occurred in Kalavachikude today. A motor accident occurred along the Kalawanchikudi Chetikula main road at dawn today. The accident had occurred as a result of the driver involved in the accident losing control of the vehicle. Now on to a story that has caught the world's attention. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott has said that rescue crews have put no time limit on the search for the missing Malaysia Airlines plane. Abbott told reporters near Perth where the operation is being coordinated that the hunt for flight MH370 was still being stepped up. Uh, I, I'm certainly not putting a time limit on it. Uh, I, I think, as I said, we owe it to the families. Uh, we owe it to everyone who travels by air. Uh, we owe it to the governments of the countries who had citizens on that aircraft. Uh, we owe it to the wider world, which has been transfixed by this mystery for three weeks now. We owe it to everyone to do whatever we reasonably can. Uh, and we can keep searching for quite some time to come. And we will keep searching for quite some time to come. And as I said, the intensity of our search and the magnitude of our operations is increasing, not decreasing. Ten aircrafts and ten ships are searching the sea southwest of Perth for debris from the airliner. The Beijing-bound plane disappeared on the 8th of March with 239 people on board. The signal from its flight data recorded last about 30 days. The search teams are deploying a special tool known as a Tau Ping locator to find the recorder which will be used once debris from the plane has been found. Several floating objects have been found during the search in recent days but none is believed to belong to the missing plane. The 30th match of the ICC World 2020 is currently underway with Sri Lanka taking on New Zealand in Chittagong. Put into bat first, the Lankans looked for a strong start with Kusal Pereira and Tilakaratna Dilshan. However, bad luck struck the Lankan lineup in the second over when Kusal Pereira was dismissed for 16. The wickets of TM Dilshan, Kumar Sangakkara and Lahiru Tirimana followed soon after. Sri Lanka lost the remaining wickets at regular intervals and could only post 100. 19 runs on the board in 19.2 overs all out. Mahila Jayawardhana top scored with 25 runs while Walt and Nishan bagged three wickets each for the Kiwis. Rocky takes it wicket and gotcha! There's the third one. Oh, he has played the uppercut and he gets four. 
Lofted man underneath it should be elementary. Gone. Martin, uh, just a couple of balls. Yeah. Gone. Yes, it. Words of motivation. The huddle for Sri Lanka. New Zealand too got off to a sloppy start, losing Martin Guptil and Brendan McCollum in the fourth over, while Ross Taylor and Jimmy Nisham were sent back in the sixth over, chasing 120 to win. The Kiwis were 38 runs for the loss of six wickets a short while ago. Oh no! What's going on here? The impetuous. That is a. Mihela was convinced. What? Oh, what about this one? Yes, this one. Oh, oh he's knocked him over. What is going on here? Heraf. Spot. Oh, that's close. That's gone. That's plan. Staying in the game, England endured a miserable end to a truly desperate winter as they suffered an embarrassing 45-run defeat at the hands of Holland at the ICC World 2020. For the second time in the history of the tournament, the Dutch claimed the prize scalp of their European rivals, managing to defend a total of 133 for 5 with relative ease. Wesley Barasitop scored for the Dutch with 48, with the rest of their batsmen contributing with reasonable scores. Stuart Broad bagged three wickets for 24 runs. First delivery. My good. 39. Got to stay there. It's a bad delivery. Oh, it's a bad delivery that gets the wicket. Well, up in the air, off the toe end of the bat, Jordan. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We've seen him take some spectacular catches. Full toss. And it's gone nowhere. They don't even think about running two. Excellent end field. The Netherlands were looking somewhere more towards the 150. Yeah, they've recovered uh, well too because England's hopes yeah. of overpowering the Dutch yeah. were shattered when they lost their first four wickets for just 32 runs. The run out of Tim Brennan put a further hole in the sinking ship and when Bopra hit Van Beek out to deep well, mid wicket to Peter Seeler, the last real hope of England making an escape to victory had departed. Netherlands won the game by 45 runs. First ball for Boren and he struck. Big ballooning slower ball. Oh, Bilparo wants two and the throw to the bowler's end. Oh, surely Bresnan has gone. Yes, Steve Davis. Fine job. Up in the air. There is a fielder coming in, lands between two of them. Oh, there should be a run out. Don't end like this. They are going to end like this. Would you believe it? And shakes all around and much celebration. Well, that's a wrap of primetime news at nine. It was a pleasure having you with us. I'm Stephanie Lazarus. And I'm Shane Silva. Take care and good night. Hotline. 0114 896 896 www.newsfirst.lk Feedback at newsfirst.lk